All right, this is round three for this casting problem here. This is the problem statement as a reminder, in case you need it. We're going to pick, off, uh, pick up where we left off, finishing the solidification time calculation for the riser. All right, we had just finished with the solidification time ratio for our part. We had said that the volume over the surface area for our part was 0.274 inches. All right. We know that the cylinder for the riser right and it has a diameter equal to its height we know that we want the volume over the surface area for the riser the volume we can say is equal to pi d squared h over 4 right and the surface area is pi d h plus pi d squared over 2. Right? Now, we know that d is equal to h, so this simplifies to d over 6 for volume over surface area. for the riser. Right? So, going back to Shvornov's rule, we had an expression that said we want 1.25, so 25% longer for our solidification time of our part, which was V over A so part squared is equal to V over A for our riser squared. Right? We now have an expression for V over A for the riser. We have a value for V over A for our part. We know that we want that to be 25% longer for the riser. So we can now plug all of these values in, right? This is 0.274 inch. This is D over 6. This is 1.25, right? And the only unknown now is the diameter of the riser, correct? So if we rearrange, we can find that for our riser, we should use a diameter of 1.84 inch, right, or larger, right, but 1.84 inch should be our minimum. Now, part E asks us for the size of the sprue exit area given a height of 8 inches. Okay, so this is part E, which talks about the mold filling time. We want this to be about 18 seconds. You know, this is going to come down to the volume that we're filling over the uh, volumetric flow rate Q. We know that we have a sprue of about 8 inches. This is all given in the problem statement. All right, we know from our previous equations that the velocity is going to come down to 2GH, right, where this is 2 times the acceleration due to gravity in inches per second, which is 386 inches per second square. And we're going for a height of 8 inches down the sprue, right? So this gives us a velocity of 
inches per second. Okay. All right, we're going to assume six parts per riser. I'm sorry, six parts and risers, right? We're making six parts, and each part has a riser, right? So we have a total volume that we're going to fill is six parts and six risers that we have to fill up, right? So total volume. Right? And we calculated in a previous video, in a previous step, the total volume for risers and for the parts. All right, so we can look back from there and get that value, which is, let's see, volume of the part we calculated to be 15.34 cubic inches. And for the riser, it comes out to pi 1.84 cubed over 4, right? Total volume. This gives us a total volume of 121.4 cubic inches for the total volume that we're going to be need to fill. All right. The volumetric flow rate, Q, is going to be the volume over the mold filling time. All right. 121.4 cubic inches and 18 seconds. All right, this gives us a volumetric flow rate of 6.74 cubic inches per second. All right. We know that this has to equal the velocity going through the sprue cross-sectional area. Right. Mass flow or volumetric flow rate is equal to velocity times the cross sectional area at that point. Right? We know that the velocity we just calculated was 78.36, I'm sorry, 63 inches per second times our sprue cross sectional area. Right? Has to equal 6.74 cubic inches per second. So this is going to give us a sprue cross-sectional area of 0.086 square inches. Right. The exit diameter here then assuming this is circular is 0 0.330 inch. All right, so a third of an inch in diameter for the sprue exit. Now the last part, I believe this was part F. Asked for you to size out the cross-sectional area of the gate Right, and we had already said that the gate cross-sectional area should be a sixth of the size of the sprue cross-sectional area. Right? And if the sprue cross-sectional area is 0.086 square inches, we want the gate cross-sectional area to be one-sixth of that. So then it should be 0. 
square inches. This is area of the gate, each gate. Right? Now, very last part says, what are some general assumptions from this? Well, one, this is a greatly simplified problem, as most problems that you're going to do are. Right? How can we improve this? Uh, in industry, a lot of times you will use simulations for uh, modeling casting problems. So it's not like you're going to eyeball this and then just assume that it's right. You will have specific casting simulation software that will help with this. This will get you sort of in the ballpark uh, and a close approximation. But this is a close approximation, so we know that this is a simplified um, model. All right. Also know that um, if we're filling from the top, this would go a lot faster than if we're filling from the bottom. All right. So in general, uh, filling from the top is about twice as fast as those uh, castings filled from the bottom. So keep that in mind as well. All right. So this will conclude this series going through this casting example.